So fake cancer, you fell for that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Ape Escape 3. Today we're going to watch a cutscene movie. Let's check out our fortunes. But anyway, uh, that movie was uh, showing things about the Pipotrons, which are those unlockable monkeys from the last couple episodes. They kind of look like robots. Mm. Uh, okay. I guess they're genetically engineered or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, I looked up the monkey from my birthday. It's the one that was hiding in the well. Seven days. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a ho I have a... My horse scope monkey is a, a horror character. And this monkey white right after the day. Right the day after mine. Why does he have suspenders and, like, a robot diaper? I... I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. We got all the monkeys. So, let's, um... Let's check out some of these. Let's see. Gario? Gar Gar How did you even pronounce that? Here's one of the Pipitrons. You can rotate the camera around them, make them, uh... Have weird perspectives? Yeah. Weird perspective, uh, certainly intuitive gameplay. I found Spectre here, too. No, no, they will not understand, because that was the stupidest plan ever. His lucky spot is a cabbage patch. Seems legit for a monkey in a suit. I... what? No. Oh boy, and they give Fatty McFats, the monkey, a uh, lucky spot, a candy factory. Are you implying uh -huh. something? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Am I what now? I I'm wondering if the game is implying something. But anyway, there's other things you can do here with astrology bullshit, and, uh... Or ap apiology, my bad. You can look at, uh, various... Uh... Astrological signs. Well, the music makes me think of Banjo-Kazooie for some reason. I think this was in the holiday level, or whatever, Titanic level. But anyway, I'm an Aries, so... I have Rami. Rami. Very good advice. Hopefully I don't inter injure myself today. So far, so <laughs> good. And you have uh, love fortunes. You can set the dates to whatever you want. So let's, uh, let's check out some of these. Oh man, they know my birthday. Don't steal my identity. And I noticed that, uh... The date... You could go really weird with the dates, so... Obviously, yeah. Ape Escape is actually a game from the future. Yeah. Okay, let's... Where they have invented time travel. Let's see, uh, how... 
compatible I am with somebody who's, uh, well, while, while I'm 8,018 years old, or whatever, sometime after that. 27%? I'm getting laid. So there's a 27% likelihood that you will live for 8,000 years. Hell yeah! Seems legit. Now, uh, let's try that again. Because I want to see what if I dated somebody from, uh, who was the same sex or whatever, I don't know. I have better love fortune with somebody of the same sex. That's... Ape Escape isn't judgmental. Yeah, that's fine by me. I'm not gay, but sure. They're just little fun things, anyway. Let's try that again. Because I, I this is really fun. Space lesbians! Looks like it's the same if you choose both females or both males. I don't think there's a difference between them. Ape Escape doesn't see a difference between lesbo and uh, gay relationships. Now, what about a female from uh, year one? <laughs> the counter was a little screwy there. So apparently you have a higher chance of scoring with somebody when you're going back in time than going into the future. Apparently. I like him old. Apparently. Ah, that's enough of that shit. Even that's a little bit too creepy for me. Let's play some minigames. We got Metal Gear Solid, but let's leave that one for last. Let's uh, try out the Street Fighter wannabe. <laughs> Ultimate Fighter. I can change some settings here. What's with this fucking music? Are you kidding me, Death? That is the best music that should be in every game. There's some rules. Uh, you can. It's a fighting game that you only use the two analog sticks with. There are no buttons pushed. Because that's really comfortable for a fighting game. It's really simplistic. I might actually be good at it then. Because I suck at fighting games. And we play it as... Like a Jackie Chan monkey. <laughs> Um, yeah. That happened. Con it controls as well as it looks. Heart punched. So, move spamming, uh... Everybody's favorite fighting game tactic. Especially when playing as Kanji. Yeah. I haven't played Persona 4 Arena yet, though. No. Don't worry, Kanji is horribly broken. As in a good way or a bad way? As in a good way. Oh. He's one of those characters that has only... that. He's one of those characters that has only throw moves, which means the enemy can't block it. They can dodge it, but they can't block it. Hmm. And, um... The also AI is really fighters. stupid. Mechanics, apparently. Mechanics. Alright, let's beat the shit out and of And this guy has a pompadour, so he will clearly be the hardest one yet. According to anime logic. Think, uh, Banjo? Banjo? <laughs> Anime logic in general. Yeah. You notice every delinquent punk character always has a pompadour. That doesn't mean they're strong, though. I've seen some really pussy pompadour characters. 
Pet Kuwabara. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. What? I haven't so, actually uh, seen that show. Let's beat up a uh, monkey time. in a bikini. The best game. Don't worry. It's interspecial. Species is violence well, no, between the species. We're not well, beating no. them with a stun club or anything. That would be inhumane. It's just one monkey beating up other monkeys. And now I have the punch-out theme stuck in my head. Yes, I'd rather be playing punch-out myself. Da, 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 Even though da, I suck da, da, da. at it. Took me a while to beat last show. So, when you were playing this, were you just rotating the analog sticks at random? Yeah, pretty much. I was starting to learn some of the moves, like, um, that flip kick attack, but, uh, other than that, yeah. You're supposed to fight through, uh, quite a lot of these to get the full story. And there is uh, a story the here. The monkey fighting game. Yep. But we'll see why I can't do this a little bit later. So With these excellent controls, I don't see how. And hold, I think holding back is blocking. Standard in fighting games. Yeah. So that's the only thing. Obvious I, statement. That's the only thing that's similar. So a good story. Please tell me he fights Darth Vader. Now we fight a golden statue, though. Aww. And look how fast this guy takes me out. That's bullshit. The best game. That is bullshit. So if somebody wants to complete that, go for it. I'm not playing this shit anymore. Fucking monkeys. Now let's just, uh, take out our anger in the Super Monkey Throw Stadium. This has some of the worst controls for a minigame I've ever seen, really. So you're, uh... At shot putting? Is that the right? Where you throw some- throw? I- I don't know. Throwing- throwing and hammers. I believe that's shot putting. And, um, you spin around the analog stick. You can only choose from eight monkeys for, uh, for your thrower. They're all fairly, they all have different stats, but, um, I usually go with the average guys. And, uh, the thing you're throwing is another monkey. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Maybe if this minigun was actually fun once you got into it. Let's uh, choose the pumpkin monkey. So you spin around with uh, the right analog stick to build up tower. And then once you let go of that, you have to make sure that you're pointing in the right direction. If you're not, then you're fucked. That's the best I've ever done in this game, by the way. Now, let's see how you, uh, usually do in this minigame. Usually, you, uh, don't know where you're aiming, so you throw it randomly. It's very hard to aim your, aim your shot put. Also, I'm spinning the analog stick, like, extremely fast with the palm of my hands. But, uh... Yeah. Doesn't work. It's hard to build up that power. Now let's get to the main course. Probably the only reason a lot of people bought this game. And you can only unlock it when you beat Spectre for the first time. Because, why not? Now this is a parody of uh, Metal Gear Solid 3's title screen, I believe. 
in the menu. That it is. Professor, can you hear me? Who's that? You caught me doing the laundry. All these darn sheets. I've got a request to make of you as an old high school friend. Ah, Campbell, is it? The same. Been a while, hasn't it, Professor? Or should that be Stonehead? Oh, don't bring up that old nickname. Haven't we buried the hatchet by now? Anyway, what can I do you for? Got something to ask you, and I'm really hoping you're going to give me the right answer. You know Snake, right? Well, it's been a long time since I had any contact with him. And come to think of it, he was his same old ornery self. That sharp-eyed little tyke. What, something happened to him? Blind-eyed bully, more like. He's dropped off the radar screen. That's so. He always did like playing hide-and-seek back in the day, but, uh... Huh? I got the sense he really hated it. Anyway, he's infiltrated a base somewhere to destroy the latest version of Messel Gear. But I've heard nothing from him within the agreed amount of time. What? But then what's your request? Out with it. Let me know what you've got in mind. I'd like you to help me locate Snake. Hey, I thought you were the pro at that sort of stuff. <laughs> this old geezer's a pro at studying apes nowadays. Also, I've decided not to get involved in these sort of things anymore. This particular affair is not necessarily without any relevance to you. The latest version of Messel Gear has an ape-like aspect to it. What the heck are you talking about? A specially trained ape guerrilla force commandeered the latest Messel Gear, and they've holed themselves up in a base somewhere. They're demanding ten billion bananas. If we don't give them what they want in 72 hours, they're talking about firing Messel Gear's lazy cannon. Naturally, there's no way the government will accept such outlandish demands. And that's why Snake went storming in. However, I'd, well, those simian specialists who hang out here with you, I'd like to get their help. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'd like to help you, but there's just one snag. You see, all of them, Spike, Jimmy, Kay, and Yumi, are at summer camp for their whole summer break. And they're getting back next week. Summer camp? This is a national emergency. This is a once-in-a-lifetime educational experience. Sure. Whatever you say. Also, the monkey net is broken and can't be used. I see. We wouldn't even be able to capture them. Look, I'm begging you. Isn't there something else you can do? Jeez, put me on the spot, why don't you? Eureka! I've got it! It might be just the ticket. So, what have you got in mind? Is Snake's battle data still around? Yeah, it's around. But what are you getting at? Get it over here at once! I'm going to upload the data into the latest model monkey helmet. Then I'll do a bit of this and some of that, and voila! Uh, sorry. I'm not really following you. The long and short of it is that we'll take a monkey who's loaded up with Snake's battle data and warp him over to where the action is. Will that work? Of course it will. Fight monkeys with monkeys. Campbell, have some faith in me. Hmm. Okay. I'll get his battle data sent over to you right away. One more thing. You'll need to keep this matter absolutely top secret. Gotcha. This is Snake. Anyone on this codec frequency? If you can hear this, get back to me right away. Okay. I can make out the voice of a monkey. But let me guess. You're an agent who's been warped in here. Okay. Key. 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 <laughs> You're sure brimming with confidence, aren't you? So you've come to find me. Okay, key, key, key. I see. The codec's broken. Can't use the wide frequency band, so I haven't been able to contact the colonel. Anyway, my mission is to take out the latest version of Messel Gear. Trouble is, I'm located near the innermost part of the base, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to move for some time. Looks like I'll need you to do the moving for me. 
From here on, let's use this frequency to communicate. I think you'll be able to provide a good deal of support here. You should also know that the baddies are some pretty tough cookies. Do your best to go around without having them see you. You'll need to be really good at clinging to walls, crawling along slowly, and other actions. If they find you, do everything to get out of there without engaging them. You with me? <laughs> Hope that's true. Let me teach you how to operate the banana pistol. Tilt the right analog stick back to get into position, then release it to fire. Be sure not to run out of ammo. That's why you'll always want to be looking for item boxes. Item boxes contain banana pistol ammo, but also various kinds of other equipment you'll need. If you come across one, grab it without delay. Not too much strain on the brain to keep that in mind, huh? Okay. Now, head to the far end. You'll find a huge elevator. Let's get in touch again once you've reached it. Okay. So I'm not a big fan of Metal Gear Solid games, but uh, this looks a lot like MGS1, I think. The first room, anyway. You have to get on yeah, an elevator. Yeah, it kind of does, now that you mention it. You have to get on an elevator, so I thought it was similar. Um, so you can do some actions. Uh, we only I think you had to do that in MGS2 as well. Yeah, um, our rations, instead of being in like Metal Gear rations, are just our health. They take the place of our cookies in the main game. From the main game. You can get half a cookie, or half a ration. But um, your rations don't restore your health when you die. Or when you go lose all your life. Your rations are your health bar. And you can shoot guards in the head and they'll be knocked out for about five seconds. So stealth in this game is harder than Metal Gear. Especially with uh, slightly worse controls. It controls pretty poorly, really. Also, you have no radar. I just noticed that. That's oh, wait, in the no. bottom right. No, you do. But like I said, these guards only stay stunned for like five seconds and then they're done. Also, you can't jump. You have to dive into stuff. Which is pretty fun. But I am really bad at Metal Gear games. Or at least ones where you have to focus on stealth. Metal Gear Solid 3? Yeah, I just fucking action through all that shit. I did two for like ten hours and I was like, I feel really bad about this. <laughs> Especially when you got to the Sorrow. I actually don't think I made it that far. Oh. Or maybe I did. Like a stream of 400 guys just coming down the river. <laughs> but yeah, stunning monkeys is kind of pointless. I mean, it helps a little bit, but... If it stayed stunned, stunned longer, it would be nice. This is actually probably the hardest room in the minigame. In my opinion. Not that it really fucking matters, because it's a minigame. Also, there's no vent there. I thought I saw a vent, though. I'm an idiot. And you're about to get caught in three... Yep. Camera angles are pretty nice. Top-down view. Everybody loves the top-down Metal Gear view. Thankfully, they don't throw grenades in the vents. So we just have to wait this alert out. Because they can't just, you know, stick their heads into a vent where they clearly saw you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Man, these are the best guards. Even in the original MGS, um, they threw grenades under the... Whatever you crawled under. I forgot what they do in the other ones, because I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 2. I watched the Let's Play it, though. I hated MGS 1 and 2. Even if it had riding in it. that noise? Yes. I like how it looks like his beard is drawn on with a marker. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So since uh, this is a stealth action game, and they're really boring to watch anyway, 
We're gonna be speeding up a lot of these parts from now on. As soon as I get caught again, I think. Which will be in about three seconds. Well, maybe not. I'm doing my best to stealth through this shit, but... Metal Gear games are not meant to be stealth. I'm just supposed to shoot everybody in the face. That's what I thought. Kind of explains why I didn't get very far into MGS1. Uh, your melee doesn't do much. But yeah, you can uh, do a three-hit combo on them and they'll be stunned for the same amount of time. There's no sparklies indicating. They all drop monkey tags. You need to collect all the monkey tags for uh, to unlock a bonus video. But we're not doing that because uh, it'll give us a passcode at the end if we get in the game. But you can just go to Game Packs and look up the passcode. So I'm a cheater, yeah, I know, but fuck. I'm not collecting all these fucking monkey tags. Although I do kind of want to play Metal Gear Solid 3 now. Even though I'm terrible at it. Eh, just kill everybody. That's how I played it, and that's how I had the most fun. Now, trying to... I don't know. This is this is kind of a cool mini game. It's just it's uh, it's kind of annoying. I do like the story sequences though; they're pretty hilarious. Probably the only thing in this game that's funny because it's funny. Yeah. It's a once in a lifetime education. This is Snake. Made it to the elevator yet? Ooh, Kiki. Impressive. You're faster than I would have thought. Guess you've got some talent. Ooh, Kiki. Kiki. <laughs> you sound like me. Once you've stepped outside, cross over the snowfield, and then head to the far end. You'll come to a building. Find a way to break in. There are landmines buried throughout the area, so be sure to watch your step. Ooh, Kiki. 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 Hmm. Could be. You should be able to make them out if you really keep your eyes peeled. But it'll be kaboom if you step on one. They'll explode even if you crawl over them, so watch out. Okay. One more thing you'll need to be aware of. Surveillance cameras are constantly in operation all around the building. Do what you can to keep out of their sight. Got it? Okay. <laughs> you got it, right? Good. Let's talk again once you've made it to the building. Break a leg. Okay. Now, this has to be Solid Snake, right? Um, I would assume so, though. He's dressed like Jack, or the boss, whichever you, whichever you want to call him. Yeah. You mean Big Boss? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was something like that. But there's also props from uh, actual games in the game. Uh, yeah, actual levels in the game. And I am really fucking bad, because uh, I already got caught. It takes forever for these fucking cautions to go away. Like this Less is so than in real Metal Gear games, since I'm pretty sure in the actual Metal Gear games it was just... Um, And this is sped up just a little bit because this is fun. And I thought I would be stealthy here and climb across the ledge, but no, can't do that. Metal Gear would have allowed you to do it. I should mention that Metal Gear Solid 3 on the re-release on the PS2, the subsistence disc, um, they do have an Ape Escape minigame where Snake goes around and does catches monkeys. I want to see that. I'll link a video in the description where... Uh, I, I would have played it myself, but I don't have the subsistence disc of it. It wasn't... It wasn't uh, it's not on the re-release on the PS3. I don't think so. Nope, it wasn't. And uh, I have the PS3 version. It doesn't... 
They have Metal Gear 1 and 2, but I don't think they have an Ape Escape minigame. Nope, they don't. I checked. Which is sad. I had it too, and I have, uh, I have, uh, the PS2 version too, but it was the first version, not the re-release. Only the re-release has it, and I checked out to see if I could buy it, but it's pretty expensive. For no reason? It's, I don't know. I guess I didn't release that many of them. But yeah, that's the only one that has the minigame in the four releases of this... ...of, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. So, we can't see that, but I'll link you to a- link you guys to the video of an Ape Escape, uh, by Chip and Ironicus. There's also an Ape Escape, uh, mask... ...in Ape Escape, or, uh, in Metal, Metal Gear Solid 3. Seriously, why wouldn't they keep that in the HD version? That would have been awesome. It would have been. They had the Metal Gear 1 and 2 revamp. But they didn't have the, the minigame. Makes me angry, because I really wanted to play it, too. I wanted to see Snake go around and shoot monkeys in the head with the easy gun. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't use a net in it. You only run into them to catch them. Aww. But Snake does the gotcha thing, or whatever. One more! Yeah. Spectre, this is the stupidest plan I've ever heard. <laughs> they don't have Spectre, unfortunately. Uh, but they do have grenades they, where you catch a whole bunch of monkeys at once. You throw a grenade they, into a bunch of monkeys and catch them all. Can I just say if they ever made a Metal Gear Solid game that was just Snake and Ape Escape, just the full game, I would pay, I would pay for that. That would just be the best game of all I'd time. I'd do $60 on that easily. <laughs> Even if it was only like two hours long, I would pay 60 bucks for that. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> Maybe on uh, Metal Gear Revengeance they'll have Raiden go around and... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Revengeance against Spectre. <laughs> that is the That's dumbest word. Name. I I'm pretty sure I came up with that title, like the, ti the word Revengeance when I was like Five. I don't Is that know. even a word? No. It's fucking stupid. Rising, isn't it also known as Metal Gear Rising? Yeah. Why don't they just keep it as that? Um, because Kojima really wants the franchise to die so he can move on to Zone of the Enders, I would assume. Oh boy. But the Zone of the Enders P uh, PS3 version also, I got a game over. Um... So you just start out at the beginning of the level, but you hit all the switches. So all I need to do is go uh, go to the exit of the level. The, the best stealth. Yeah, the exit of the level it does show close off, though. I was hoping these monkeys would get close to these mines. These are mines, by the way. These huge bombs sticking out of the snow. I was hoping they would go close to it, but they uh, have an invisible wall they can't get close to. Of oh. course. Oh, well. Can't expect Ape Escape 3 programmers to do everything. Although they probably hired some, or maybe borrowed a couple of Kojima guys, I don't know. Probably. Can you hear me? I just saw a shadow nearby. Watch out! I think you've got some real trouble ahead. You're going to have to take him out to progress. You've got a powerful weapon at your disposal, so put it to good use. I'm counting on you. Powerful weapon? What? You just have a stealth banana thing. Nope, we get a new weapon here. Also, this... If you just stand still, this monkey can hit you. With his, uh... Bo bottles. Also, we get the pineapple grenades. The best game. I don't know, it reminds me of, like, a Donkey Kong 64 weapon. Cause weren't, weren't the pineapples in that grenade like or something? I don't actually know. I thought they were oranges in that game. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. But anyway, the banana pistol does damage too, but you have, for extra damage, you want to hit him in the back. If you use all your pineapple grenades, they respawn. And this is a boss. Can you believe it? This is the best boss. What are you talking about? They're almost as dumb as Metal Gear God bosses. <laughs> <laughs> 
the robot. The robot. Missile gear. <laughs> Man, I threw that grenade right in that monkey's face. He should be down. I don't know why, but these pineapple grenades explode in a puff of green smoke. Just something. You can set off an alert here, but no new monkeys will come up. Looks like you've reached the facility. However, this is where the real fun begins. Ukiki. The facility is protected by surveillance cameras, laser sensors, and other robust security systems. Make it past those defenses, and once you've reached the top, make your way down the ramp. Kiki. That's where the banana warehouse is located. Do whatever it takes to reach that warehouse. Ukikiku. Something wrong? Ukikiku. I'm counting on you. A cardboard box is lying around near the starting point. Use this to sneak by the other monkeys. Here's how. Briefly depress the left analog stick to get into a crawling stance. And then you'll even be able to move around like that. Give it a try. Good luck. Rookie. Don't look at Solid Snake, it's bad for your health. <laughs> so now we have a Japan themed level, why not? Yeah. And we have laser sensors, they're actually hard to get by. At least this next one is. But the boxes, uh, the monkeys won't like lift up the boxes or anything, so just as long as they don't see you moving at them, you're fine. I love how they, um... They still sink into the ground, even in the Metal Gear minigame. Yep. This might be just a PS3 thing, I'm not sure. My PS3 has some weird glitches. We'll see that in .hackgu soon enough, or maybe that old video will be before that. I don't know. Fuck. We will see. Yeah. So just, uh, weed it out. Like how none of them saw you slowly crawling along the ground. Yeah, I know. And I was still in alert mode, too. Or caution, or whatever. Let's go beat this guy. Thankfully, if you beat them up fast enough, um, it doesn't count the alert. Which is nice. For some reason, there's this huge fucking thing. So, let's just jump down here. There's nothing on the walkway there. It's just... Big... You can aim th aim in first person mode, kind of like Metal Gear Solid 3 too. I think they introduced that in an uh, MGS2, but technicalities. Yeah, whatever. This is an Ape Escape Let's Play. We don't have to. We don't have to. Be we don't have accurate. to care about your Metal Gear. Yeah, exactly. Because we gotta catch Spectre, Chop Rocket. That was the dumbest plan. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! You're going to have to take out the boss who's guarding the bananas. Get as close as you can to him without being noticed. And then unleash everything you've got. Anyway, here's the boss. It's a fucking UFO. Why not? It's I guess I couldn't just... come up with any different bosses from the actual game. That would be too much programming. Also, uh, if Snake gets hit with the uh, love laser, he just dances around for a little for a little while. The best way to take down this boss is to go into first person mode and throw grenades. Thankfully you can do that. They give you a lot of rations. Also, fucking cannonball heads. I don't know how he didn't I don't know how he hit didn't hit me, but whatever. Um, because Snake is a wizard. And that's the second boss of the game. Mini game. Let's stock up in pineapple grenades. Looks like you finally made it to the nerve center. That's the so-called brain. Kiki? Uh-huh. That's where the computer that controls Messel Gear is housed. For security reasons, the computer is actually situated in several different locations. In order to stop Messel Gear. You've got it. 
I've already destroyed some of them, but there's still some left for you to take care of. Can I leave them to you? Rookie-geeky. Good. If that's the case, we don't have much else to talk about here. You'll need a watermelon bomb to destroy the computer. Rookie-geeky-geeky. Rookie. You heard me. Set it in place right in front of the computer, and then detonate it. Once you've selected the watermelon bomb, tilt the right analog stick in the direction you want to place it. Detonate it by quickly depressing the right analog stick. If you use several bombs, they'll all go off together if they've been placed close enough to each other. Get the hang of these steps. Kikiki. Once you've blown up the whole computer, a door leading out will open up. The door is huge, so I doubt you'll miss it. I'll be waiting for you on the other side. Let's meet up there. Rookie. All right, time for the most annoying level in the game, but probably the most beautiful minigame level. So we gotta blow up all the com terminal computers around here that's on this beach for some reason. And you gotta sneak around in broad daylight. Yep. And we get the watermelon bombs, which are like C4 for the people who didn't, who aren't watching the uncut commentary version. There was one already blown up. I didn't do that though. Thankfully, the box is very good at uh, being mobile cover. So basically, the box just breaks the game as long as you don't move and don't get caught. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. You die if you fall into water. Give me an answer. Snake. Snake. So water kills you. Well, the more you know. Yeah, also the you've seen little cracks all over the walls, they're prisoners. You can't blow up the walls until you get the watermelon bombs though. Oh, because yeah. you can't have a metal gear game without backtracking. Exactly. And um if you save all the prisoners you get a special, I think you get the movie or whatever unlocks or some concept art or some stupid shit. You need it to get 100% in the game, but uh, like I said, it'll just give you a passcode where you can unlock that. So you can just plug it in on, learn it from game packs. And um, I know this is a lot of speeding up, but this level took me, this is my second run on it, because I did a practice run. So I could get this down pat. I'm out of watermelon bombs, so that's not good. Thankfully the monkeys do don't really come over here. Is this what it feels like to be Sonic? Because everything's just moving really fast. Uh, do you have a map? What about a map? Oh, never mind. Anyway, um... That blew up the last computer, so let's make it all the way over there. But I'm gonna get hit by another mon monkey, but you can dive into them, but it doesn't stun them. So you just gotta wait until this opens up. Huh, now there's a box next to that open door. Oh well, can't be anything important. You listening? A really nasty boss is waiting to surprise you. You can use explosives against him. Set a watermelon bomb in place and let him fall into the trap. I only <laughs> ate rotten rats in a dingy prison cell after getting my eye shot off. Oh wait, that's a different <laughs> boss. Never mind. Uh, that's a different snake. Snake, boss, same thing. Yeah, whatever. So, uh, pineapple grenades to defeat the boss. It's the mammoth thing from the regular game. Really doesn't have any different moves. It can suck you in with, uh, with its thing on the tusk, or blow a hole, whatever. I'm not a biologist, leave me alone. With its trunk? Yeah, that thing. But that's the boss. Just throw pineapple grenades at it, and uh, you're done. There's two monkeys in it. Let's blow them up. I also sent uh, the sun nurse to play Bomberman. <laughs> ah, Bomberman. <coughs> she 
get out my N64. That's the hangar Missile Gear is in. Right now I'm located a short distance ahead of it, and I'm checking out what state Missile Gear is in. That's strange. I thought I heard something starting up. Since you've destroyed the entire control computer, what the heck is going on? Uh-oh. It's probably a function of the main security system. The system is set to activate Missile Gear if the entire control computer gets shut down. For now, let me go first. Catch up with me as soon as you can. Oh, of course they had to get that in there. Yeah, of course. Key! Key! So, we're in the Wild West again. We can crawl under these porches. Cowboy snake. Yep. There's a lot of monkeys in this level. Solid Marston. <laughs> Speaking of what would be the best game... <laughs> Jack or Jack Mon Marston catching monkeys? <laughs> well dressed as Solid Snake. <laughs> or, are you t or like K or Yumi and Red Dead Redemption. Because I play both. <laughs> you can stun them twice after you dive into them. Also, there's some, for some reason, bombs rolling down that mountain. Whatever. Why not? It's Missile Gear. Exactly. This is about as consistent as a regular plot. What was that noise? Nano machines? What the hell? Oh, yeah, I guess they can't catch you in the box if you're if you're in their line of path. It's like, huh, this box is moving. Mm -hmm. Up and down, and up and down. Quick snake, start mashing X. Ocelot! Also, there's a miniature snake figurine over there. Yep. There's also a miniature uh, Natalie, or, yeah, Natalie figurine in the room, too. You can shoot Snake and he'll grunt as well. Yeah. Mm. Now, here's the Metal Gear boss. This is Metal Missile Gear. Missile Gear. Missile Gear, sorry. Gotta get my terminology right. Piss all the fans off. It'll shoot pineapples out at you. You know, you remember this boss in Metal Gear, right? Oh yeah, the the giant train right after the torture room. I... <laughs> uh, this thing is actually pretty hard. I think this is like my 27th try. So yeah, this can be difficult. Especially if you're uh, stupid like me and didn't get pushed back all the way. Because there are, there's a bunch of rations and stuff back there. Which we'll see in a bit. Anyway, he shoots slingshot bullets at you. Also a remix of uh, Metal Gear Solid song. Which I am perfectly okay with. Yeah, I'm fine with that. You can set down watermelon bombs, so when he rushes you, he'll hit those and blow, blow that up instead. Also shoot missiles, and the drills will hurt you. So what is the purpose of this thing? And it's just like... It's... Oh, they wanted... It, it was going to fire its uh, lazy cannon. I guess it's the Shago hat. Shago hot. Yeah, this is Volgan's boss song, isn't it? I don't know, I never I actually finished is. three. Yeah, this is the Shago Hod fight boss song. I believe, anyway. If Metal Gear fan wants to correct me on that, uh, go for it, but I don't really give a shit. Also, that's it. So, Metal Gear is a train, and we're afraid of this thing because... Um, Except it's not over yet. We have to duel Liquid Ocelot. 
No, it's probably, um, it's gotta be an eight pun for his name. A monkey pun of some kind, like... I died. I'm not the writers of this game, I can't come up with a monkey joke right? about Liquid Ocelot. He's named Peepo Ocelot, but I think it is supposed to be Liquid Ocelot, uh, kind of spoofing off of, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. This last fight where you hand-to-hand... On top of met on top of Metal Gear. Yeah, I think that's what it's supposed to do. Is missile even a word? No, it's just uh, trademarked, so can't do it. You they used the original Metal Gear Solid theme here, but they changed it recently. So you're an agent, huh? Sure are one brave little monkey. Pretty sharp eyes you've got there. Anyway, I guess we've brought the world back from the brink of catastrophe. And it was all due to you. <laughs> By the way, we haven't been properly introduced yet. I'm Snake. You can call me that from now on. And you? Ki 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 ki. Ki ki. Ki ki. Interesting. A pair of snakes. Nice to meet you, Snake. I think we're going to get along just fine. Okay. I'm off to Colonel Campbell's place to report on the mission. What are you going to do now? Is that right? Well, I guess that's the way it goes. We'll probably meet again somewhere. I hate those torture sequences. You are mashing the X button with your balls? Ha ha ha. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I had to go there. <sighs> but anyway, that was uh, Muscle Gear Solid. I think it was kind of fun. Little, cool little mini game in it. Shame they didn't uh, bring back Monkey Soccer from Ape Escape 2, which was really fun, but oh well. But anyway, here's the code that you get for uh, getting all the monkey tags and saving all the survivors. Oh, that's really hard to guess. Yeah. And it unlocks a new skit. Two new skits. So let's check them out. And the director is Hideo Kojima himself. He directed the skit. I bet it'll be really funny. Hideo Kojima. Comic genius, Kojima. No, seriously, when are you making Son of the Enders 3? I was going to get Son of the Enders, the HD collection, but apparently it's really buggy and shit. Yeah, Konami really doesn't care about anything other than Metal Gear, do they? I don't think so. Anyway. Don't you mean apes of liberty? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. What? Oh my god, this is the best fan fiction ever. So I guess Liquid Ocelot is the father of Darth Vader, and Darth Vader is the father of Snake. Solid Snake. <laughs> Alright then! I think we just hit our all-time high. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this Let's Play, everybody. We're gonna have the time trial episodes out, and they won't be commentated, and, um... There'll also be the collection video out, which will be super boring, but if you want to page through it, go for it. <laughs>
Missile Gear. <laughs> Got any last words, Geek? This is the end of the Let's Play. No, no, I think. I think it was fun. <clears throat> Will you be joining me on another Let's Play? Perhaps so. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Fragile Dreams? I don't know. If, hmm. I know nothing about that, so. Hey, perfect. <sighs> All right. Bread to rights. Cut. <sighs> <laughs> not one episode. I will not let one episode of this go by without one, at least one Red Super joke. <laughs> I was going to say cut, paste, print, but fuck, goddamn. <laughs> I can't top that shit. <laughs> so, say goodbye to Afros. Let's say hello to Tear from Tales of the Abyss voice acting a robot. Huh? Fragile Dreams. Oh. I will say that Afro Scientist sounds like a more amusing show than Afro Samurai. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I hated that from Sam Raimi. <sighs> but that's just because I don't like Samuel L. Jackson all that much. But anyway, that's enough of the Let's Play. <laughs> Missile Gear! <laughs> that was... That was the best thing. <laughs>